Welcome to the South Florida Saltwater Fishing Report. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. All right, folks, welcome to the show. Here we are, the one-stop shop for everything local fishing. We're going to go over what's biting, who's catching it, where it's being caught, and of course, later in the show, we're going over our future marine forecast, our moon phase, and our tide charts. Everything that will keep you in the know so that you can get into the bite. All right, folks, so there is a good sign. We got no news from the FWC this week, no closures, no nothing. Um, the only thing that I've seen that's weird is they did put out a notice that Amberjack was closed for a month, but I still see um, charter boats catching them. So I'm a little confused on that. Maybe somebody can shed some light on that for me. I. I, honestly, that's just something I don't know. Maybe they know something we don't. Anyway, like I said, welcome to the show. So we're going to get right into the bite. All right. So we're going to talk inshore real quick. Inshore, we got a solid sheep's head bite. Over the flats, down in the keys, we got tarpon and bonefish. Bonefish, if you like going, catching bonefish, little sporty thing, fly fishing, doing whatever, they're, they're, they're hot. And uh, as the... As it sort of shifts into summer, these fish are going to head out to deeper waters and that fishing will cool off drastically because shallow water, especially on the in Everglades National Park, it gets real hot real quick and fish don't like it. It, it was actually over 100 degrees, the water temperature in some areas last year. All right, so our inshore bite is, is it's pretty much the same. It's spring, everything is, is biting. You know, if you go into your canals, like I said, sheep's head, the snook are still biting too. So all your inshore stuff. Now I'm gonna head over and get right into some stuff that is uh, great. This is uh, Justin. He had a great little shallow inshore trip, it seems like, and I'll show you here, right here, we're gonna share his catches. The first one he got is Spanish mackerel. All right, so he's got that on a gotcha jig, a little bit of a uh, intel right there. And we can um, go and further explore what he caught because he had this 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 great trip. He's got a hogfish, same trip. Now, if you look out behind him, he's over the sand, which you can see by that aqua green uh, color. He's not that deep, so nice hogfish. Wonder if it's a keeper or not. I'll have to ask him what part of town he was actually in when he got this. All right, let's continue on with his shallow water catch. Here we go, nice little red grouper. Again, in the shallows. Shallow water, inshore stuff. You, you can go out and get these, not very far out if you're not very adventurous. Great, great trip he looked like he had. All right, what else do we got from this shallow water? Up oh, here we go, everybody's favorite, the remora. There's always that one remora that is swimming around your boat that will not go away. Looks like he had to pick it off so that he could go and uh, get, you know, continue his day fishing. Now, I actually know somebody who loves to catch these things and takes them home. They are related to Cobia. So hey, whatever floats your boat, if you like remoras, you can keep them. There's, they're, they're, a, uh, they're not a regulated fish. So just a you know, little thing to think about. And next, let's see what else he's got on his inshore trip. Oh, little, cute little, something like a mutton snapper, just a little bit smaller. That's an awesome catch right there. Mutton snapper, of course, that one uh, going back in the drink. Um, so, like I said, here's a great example of an inshore trip. When I say inshore, I'm talking, you know, this, this is, looks like they're in maybe 20 feet of water, if I'm guessing, but they're definitely over the sand. And they had a great trip. So let's continue on. That is that is that is our inshore stuff right there. Round we're gonna move to a little bit over the reef. And of course, over the reef means a little bit deeper. We've got lane snappers. If you are into getting on the lane snapper bite that and you're you're failing during the day, go into 30 feet, 40 feet, punish the lane snappers. They're 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 there for the taking. Over out a little deeper, 70, 60-ish feet ish. We've got yellowtail snapper. The yellowtail snapper bite right now is 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 on fire. Just make sure you've got current. 
And mixed in with those yellow tails, of course, we have the Ciro mackerel. They travel together in packs like that. Good stuff. Also, over our reef, we've got some porgy. Let me find out here. Somebody sent me, oh, perfect. Gotta love you some porgy. So this share right here is from Glenn. He went out and he says, hey, it's not exactly what I was looking for. We got a nice porgy. That's nice. That, that's great dinner. Some people actually swear. Somebody commented. They said, hey, I'll take a porgy over a mutton snapper. It's, it, it's good eating. And, and, you know, it, whatever floats your boat. There you go. There's a little size for you right there. And uh, he's got his rig. I can't really tell what he caught it on. But here we go. Look at what it turned into. There we go. Look at that. That's nice right there. A dinner and a half. All right, so Porgy, right? Also, we still have our solid mutton snapper bite going on. Let me look right here. We'll keep moving on. We'll flip through the uh, the Facebook page, which is the South Florida Saltwater Fishing Report that is tied directly to this weekly live show. If you are on Facebook and you have not joined the group, please feel free to do so. All right. Enough of the uh, self-promotion right there. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Right there. Bang. Solid mutton snapper. What did he say? This is by Osmany. Uh, bear with me. 25-inch muttons on Saturday. Uh, saying that the bite was slow. Obviously, that's the current that was making it slow. Causing a lot of tangles. Tough conditions. But, hey, it made it happen. There we go, nice mutton snapper. So the mutton snapper bite is still solid, still consistent. Cannot complain about that. And also, um, no pictures, but I know that the cobia are still going off. Cobia are still a nice solid bite. They're still around, they're still doing everything. What kind of setup would I recommend for that inshore bite? How? Oh, it's, it's tough to say. I would definitely do, here, when I'm fishing the reef, what I try to do is go with as little weight as possible. Here's the, the question right here. What kind of setup? As little weight as you can possibly stand. If you can go with no weight and just flat line out and keep letting line out until the fish hits it and yanks it out of your hand and then you slam your bell shut, that's what you wanna do. Chum, obviously chum is gonna bring in small fish and chum will also bring in the predators. Um, if you're going to use a fish finder rig, you'll definitely want to use fluorocarbon. You know, a, at least three feet of it, if not more, seven feet or whatever. If you're going for mutton snapper, you're going to need like 25, 30 feet of fluorocarbon leader. Um, so I hope that helps. But really, when I'm fishing the reefs like this for those fish, um, the concept is, is if you think about it, if you've ever thrown a piece of bait over the water and just watched it like drift down, the fish attack it like they've never seen food because it looks natural. The more weight you got that your bait sinks unnaturally fast to the bottom tends to look sketchy to a older fish. Their fish are dumb, but they're not that dumb, if that makes any sense. All right, let's move on. Good question. Um, Yes, Cobia. All right, let's move on out deep, out deep. Swordfish are still biting. If you're into swordfish, go get you one. Uh, there's some monsters out there. A lot of what I've seen, uh, the boats pulling in are pups, 60-ish 60, 60 pounds. But still, a great fish, you know, on the... You can go on the lighter end and get those ones, but if you... You never know what you're going to get when you are sword fishing. You, la you, you latch onto a couple hundred pound swordfish, you're going to need that LP, a Tanacom 1000 or something like that. It's not going to handle a good size swordfish. So, all right, keep on moving on. Vermilion snapper are in the bite. Vermilions all year round, they're in two to 300 feet, but you got to find them. They're usually hanging out off the wreck somewhere. You will see them and once you get into the bite with them, generally they're going with the current. So if your current's going north, which it should be out that far, you will have to kind of go north and find them and get back on that bite. Also, black belly rosefish. They're, again, another fish that there's no season. They're always there. So 
these two fish, if you're getting skunked, uh, go get them. Black Rolly Rosefish, 800 feet uh, up and down the Tri-County area. Uh, stay out of the mud. The way to target Black Belly Rosefish is look at your contour lines. Don't go in those areas that look like they're, they're mud. Stay over, over to gravel. All right. Now, to what everybody should be doing. If you are not doing this, I recommend you give it a try. Trolling. Trolling the deep ledges of the reef and further out right now is on fire. We are having a spectacular start to the fishing season. So I understand that it, it takes a little getting used to fishing and being a little adventurous. Some people go, nah, trolling's not for me. Trust me, e e even if you don't got the, I wanna say like, Shimano TLDs and Penn Internationals. If you just if you've got like a more meteor spinner or something, put it on troll. Trust me, it will change your mind. And especially right now with what we're gonna go over. The fish of the week right now. It, it, everybody's lacing into them is black fin tuna and the Mahi have shown up in force. So let's get right into some pictures. I want to show you real quick. This is a picture from my buddy Blake. He sent me uh, he had a great, uh, great run on the blackfin tuna. He's got a couple of false albacore in there also. So this is typical, um, you know, what's going on now. He did also send me a picture of what he caught the, he caught his tuna on this little four inch Islander. Nice colors right there, aqua and yellow. Now he gave me a little bit of insight on this. Let me just pull up my notes real quick and share with you what he said because he he actually told me i believe all right the black fin bunch of little black fin caught between 4 and 7 p.m last friday around 300 feet so there you go black fin tuna in that depth range he, did a little bit of the afternoon trip, but you know, they'll bite in the morning too. So very good on that information. Okay. And also let me see here. We've got some more while I'm here on the email side, we will go and look at this. This is some stuff from Mike Bayless where ah, must've forgot. Hold on. I can always find my pictures <laughs> anyway. We will go back to that one. Let's take a look at the Facebook page. Let's take a look back at the Facebook page and we're going to see dolphin and hold on. Bear with me, share screen. All right, there we go. All right, perfect. All right, so let's get right into this. Let's see what we've got. We got more tuna. This is Gavin Smith. Some nice black fin tuna there. And then he's got, uh, here's his bucket. Here's the catch right there. Like I said, the mahi have shown up in force. Got a false albacore. Looks like a tile fish, but I hope not. <laughs> They're out of season, but hey, uh, we're, not, we're not snitching on nobody here. We're just here to have fun, right? So dolphin, and again, great catch, black fin tuna. So great offshore trip. I'm not sure if that's a tile fish. Hey, anyway, regardless, there we go. There's our corgi. Here we go. All right, some more sharing. Daniel Evans, nice little catch of black fin tuna there. So we got a little uh, green sort of a chugger going on. There's what they're biting. Let's see if there's any information out here that they included in there. Some of this, some of that. Asked what bait to keep ready for Mahi if they see him. Uh, I suggest always keeping a loaded white bucktail jig, three quarter ounce on a light spinner. Here we go, a couple more false albacore. Great trip right there for Daniel Evans. Now let's head back to our Monday Monday and see what else we got trolling. There we go. This is down in Marathon. This is uh, Captain Alex. If you're ever down in the Keys and you need a captain, contact me. I can get you his information. There we go. A boatload of blackfin. Like I said, the blackfin tuna and the dolphin. They're, they're 
they're everywhere up and down the east coast so perfect again if you need a captain down in marathon keep going keep blasting through uh so this is what happens it's always fun when you don't catch take a beautiful picture hey sometimes you get skunked I mean, trust me i've had more than my fair share of days where i've caught nothing and i go in and i'm looking at everybody pool bucket loads of fish out and i go man i'm starting to reconsider my life as a fisherman there we go another black fin tuna on a purple and black uh, it's not a feather it's some sort so purple and black right we've got green purple and black aqua yellow all the goodness this is from wex 240 feet out of key largo so the keys again up and down the coast like i said black fin tuna and the dolphin let's keep going further down our weekly here we go aha from said landed his first tuna and got two back to back so all right nice tuna he's also got a couple of yellow tails like i said the yellow tails on those reef and there's a nice little margate in there so great trip glad he caught some tuna and he i believe he even showed what he got his tuna on so again a little bit more in intel seeing that he's sharing let's check it out here we go that's what he caught his black fin tuna on pink and white little jet head Great stuff right there. He's got those doubled up hooks. That's what I like to see. Doubled up five O's. All right. That was Sed's catch. Let's see if anybody else has got anything in the works. This is Sebastian. Sebastian, again, another black fin. I told you. So the black fin and the mahi are on fire. Got to thank everybody for sharing their catches. This is up and down the coast. So if you had a chance, ah, here we go. Sebastian, again, like I said, here we go. Guess what it is? It's a mahi. Perfect. I mean, th that's a great offshore trip right there. A couple of nice fish. You're going home with a small little buffet, a little tuna, a little mahi. Excellent. All right. Let's see what else we got on the feed of everybody showing what they, oh, here we go. Jason Reese. Look at this. Solid wahoo catch right there. Let's see what information he has given us about that. That's pretty cool. I can see the GoPro right there. Jason has a YouTube channel, Guggen2 Pro Offshore Angler. All right. He got Blackfin. Uh, bite has been on fire. He says he caught close to 20 of them in uh, the two day in two days. Also between two and 400, but they're probably biting everywhere. Yes, they are. Uh, the Wahoo, 210 to 290. Oh, standard wahoo depth deep ledge of that reef right around you know the the, the ledge your, your second reef is uh one around ends around 150 ish and then your third reef starts around 200 to 300 so yes jason awesome wahoo let's see what else we got let's move on and that about does it i want to see you here bear with me so We'll shut that down for two seconds and I want to see if I can email myself. I got a couple more pictures here. I want to get up on the screen. So let's talk about what's coming up with our weather here real quick. Um, the weather this week, right now, the weather is really blowing. So, and it's going to be blowing all the way through Thursday. And what it is, is we've got a front that's approaching. So that front is going to come through thursday night as i pull up the graphics and i show you them you will see what i mean all right i'm just emailing myself something real quick so i can pull up these pictures everybody likes to see what they caught i like to see what everybody caught so here let me just wait for a second there we go i got it up all right there we go perfect okay let's get it up this is from mike bayless out of boynton beach he headed south down to Del Rey again the usual suspects we got the mahi mahi nice nice solid catch right there what else has he got another mahi so a couple mahi and of course blackfin tuna so again the standard fish of this week the blackfin tuna and the mahi are on fire I'm sure it's going to stay that way still for weeks 
And as summer starts to bring itself in, those mahi are going to go from, you know, that big to start being there about that big. So you get out there and get them while you can. Blackfin, remember, there's two per person. No size limit FWC. Mahi are five per person, 30 per boat. Know your regulations. Don't get in trouble with the FWC. They're, they're, they're being sticklers right now. I'm seeing them give, you know, I've, I've seen, seen them give tickets left and right. Typically in years past, man, they catch you with some fish. They might look at you and go, really? You know, call you stupid and tell you to poke the eyes out and throw it back in. Get on your way. They're, they're giving tickets for everyone. Let's see. Do I have an explanation of trolling a planner with quick release real uh, wine on leader without using a bridle, probably adding loops to a leader? Yes, I do. I actually have a quick way to make it with mono. Um, if you go to the YouTube channel, of course, let's see. Let me pull this up real quick and I'll answer that question. Yes, I do. I'm going to show you what video it is and then we'll move on with life. We'll get into our, so there we go. Here's my YouTube channel, right? Go on the channel, uh, go down. Let me look where it is. It's if you click the top section, which is videos or, or you can go to uploads. We can look and you'll see you go down to it and it's called the quickest way not how to make the strongest bridle the strongest bridle this one is making it with braid there's one that is how the quickest way to make it and it's down there there, there we go easiest way to make a quick release planner that one is where i show you how to make it with 150 pound mono and crimp it on loops and stuff that way you don't have to worry about making it with braid but i do suggest you make it with braid it's not that tricky you can watch that other video too and it, it it'll help you out great yes i did there we go yes about trolling with a planner yes you're gonna want to learn to planner troll if you're trolling out of course not a problem if you are trolling out off south florida and you're trolling Learn to learn, learn to planner troll. I got a, a bunch of videos on there that explain it in detail. I show you how to set a planner. I show you how to trip a planner, how to tie a bridle. You really want to learn how to troll with a bridle system. You don't want to do the old school thing, which is hand lining it in and letting the line loop back out behind your boat a hundred feet and make life easy. Learn to take the planner off and wind it all the way up and you, you, you'll actually lose less fish uh, doing it that way. All right. So that's our fishing report. Also, uh, sailfish. I've, I've seen, let me see here. Uh, la, 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 la. We'll share this real quick. Little charter boat called YB Normal. They are out of the Keys. Sailfish. So they're still catching sailfish out there. They're, they're not as uh, biting as they were, but they are still biting. All right. Let's move on with our weather report we are going to go to wendy all right now um also i had a gentleman who asked me if i could explain a little bit more about the conditions when it comes to what conditions do they want to see um let me pull it up real quick here pull up his request uh, so i can just go over it because maybe i i don't want to seem vague or rush through it when i'm doing the the report on the weather. All right, here we are. Good morning, Heath. Tonight's live stream. Can you get into what conditions we should be looking for when we are reading the wind and tide charts? I see on the Windy app the conditions, but I don't know what the best conditions are that I should be looking for. Okay, so to this is a double edged sword when it comes to it. Um, first off, when you are you got to consider what type of boater you are your knowledge of your inlet getting out to sea and what how, how how you handle that if you're more knowledgeable and you learn to traverse your inlets 
when the seas are more bumpy and you can deal with adverse conditions, I would say, hey, go out in what you feel comfortable in. If you're not so, if you're not so much of a pirate and an old salt and you haven't done it a hundred times, you, you're just going to have to be cautious. So typically I would say for new boaters, you know, you don't want, want to watch your seas when they get to the two to three foot range because getting through that inlet, it's really never the getting out that's too bad. It's always the coming back in when you're, you got that falling sea. So I say, you know, new boaters, two feet, three feet, very experienced boaters, you know, get out there, get through your inlet, come back in safe. The worst thing you can ever do though, when you are going through an inlet is decide, hey, I'm not gonna make it and try to turn right back around when you are in the danger zone. You get caught in the trough of a wave and the next wave comes, it can, you know, turn your boat upside down and it's a real showstopper. Anyway, hope that helps a little bit. So what we'll do here on Windy, right down here at the bottom, there's these color coded charts, which tell you how strong your winds are. It tells you how big your waves are. It's gonna, the rain one is, is pretty self-explanatory. So let's get a little bit further into this. Here we are right now. Like I said, our wind is ripping. It's gonna be ripping through tomorrow. Through tomorrow, we still got, you know, our winds are in the 20s with gusts well into the mid 20s. Thursday, we've got that front pushing through. So here we're up in the mid 20s. Over on the West Coast, same thing. Conditions are gonna be choppy. Shallow water, you're gonna have muddy waters because of this wind too. 10,000 islands everywhere. All that Chukaluski, Naples, everybody's getting pounded this week. Uh, let's look look up north. You know, the further up north you go, the nastier it gets. And that is Thursday as our front pushes through. And then gets nastier. And then Thursday night is when the front's pushing through. You can see it's starting to dissipate there. And our wind is shifting to a little bit westerly. Friday, there you go. Starts to give in a little bit. Down around Fort Lauderdale, Miami, you actually have it going below 10 miles an hour. Over here, down in the Chukaluski Everglades National Park, you get a little bit of a break. Over on the big curve, just south of Naples, too. So if you're, you know, you might be able to get a little bit of that inshore stuff going on. If if the, the waters aren't too muddied up from all that wind you're going to get. Same thing with the Palm Beach area. You, you, you will have, you're, you're probably going to have a slight lay down so this is 9 a.m friday friday morning offshore you're probably looking at it being a little bit more sporty out there friday afternoon we got a wind ship shifts back northeasterly down off the in key largo we look like we got a convergence of two different winds right there so you might have a little bit of a dead spot hitting there for you friday and you might be able to get out do a little bit of afternoon trip i see saturday again miami Lay down a little bit up north. We're picking back up out west. We've got, it'll lay down because you've got your wind. You're on the leeward side of the island there. Saturday morning, again, the wind's kind of coming northerly. And as it swings down, it tends to go, it's a little bit actually northwest the further up we go towards Palm Beach. And then it swings down around the peninsula as it heads further south into Saturday afternoon. The winds are tending to let up, let down a little bit. And are the bait fish back? Ah, uh, it all depends. You gotta, Daniel Pier always hold bait fish. The Pilcher run will be happening soon. That usually it tends to wait until about June to start picking up. But uh, thread fins are out there. They're, bait fish are, Pilchards are going to be in the shallows too. You can find them. The mullet won't happen until later in the year. The shrimp is pretty much done. So, um, you know, if you're into dwarf jacks and stuff like that, go out by your buoys. Goggle eyes are always around. You just got to go and find them at night. All right. So Saturday afternoon again, and we're, you know, right around 10 miles an hour, a little bit less. Sunday, Sunday morning, inland, inshore. And up north, we're laying down a little bit. So Sunday morning, eh, might be doable. 
Let's check our West Coast. Of course, you know, in in you're getting a, you're on the leeward side as the winds come from the northeast. So Sunday, you're probably doable on the West Coast to get out there and get um, to those redfish and your flats and all that goodness that happens out there over on the East Coast. And it's an inshore day if, if you're going out. It, it, it's going to be bumpy out there this weekend, but it, it's doable. Sunday afternoon, again, look at our West Coast Naples. It's it's really starting to lay down. Key Largo, we're blowing. This green phase right here is up words of the high teens and 20 miles an hour if this helps explain some of these conditions when we go into this more aqua color that's when you are below 10 miles an hour five miles an hour this right here is beautiful conditions so when we're talking about the conditions if you see a lot of green on this chart you're probably going to want to consider it now if our wind is blowing from the east that's going to kick our seas up if we have the wind blowing from the west that's when it will turn more into a swell and be a little bit more subdued and laid down and doable. Monday, there we go. Looks like uh, we'll have an easterly wind, but again, we are below 10 miles an hour in the Tri-County area, all the way up into Fort Pierce and way up in North in Palm Bay, Sebastian, looking like Monday morning. This is 5 a.m. Monday morning. Again, the West Coast looking good. Get out and do that stuff down in the Keys. It's still ripping. It looks like it's going to rip all weekend in the Keys. So it's, again, if you're looking to get out fishing, it's going to be bumpy out there. Monday afternoon starts to pick up a little bit. Yep, there we go again. We're up in towards 20 miles an hour come the afternoon of Monday, heading into nightfall. Tuesday, we're back up at 20 miles an hour. Uh, protected area, leeward side again. When I say the leeward side, that means the side of the island that the wind is not coming from. So if the wind is blowing from the east across the state of Florida, we've got our, the area of Naples and stuff is the leeward side. If we've got our wind blowing from the west, that means the east coast of Florida is leeward. It changes. That you, leeward means you're on the protected side of the peninsula. All right, so Tuesday looking kind of gnarly out there. So Monday, you know, the weekends you can get out. You can probably do it. It's just you're just going to have to be careful. So when we're talking about those conditions again, it's going to be bumpy out there. Again, just consider this when you are making your plans. You have these. Don't just look at windy. Look at your look at your inlet that you go out of Boynton, Boca. Here, let me show you right now. Let's look at the conditions. We'll pull up Boca Inlet webcam real quick and we'll take a look at it and see. And th this is a lot of how you've got to consider when you're heading out. You got to look at your... So you see these breakers right here. And you see some, you can go down and look at your beach. Look, th this beach right here, that, that's a sign that it's going to be fairly bumpy out there, right? When you've got, don't, don't just look at this, look down your beach, okay? So, it, it's quite bumpy out there, especially getting through that inlet, even though you don't really see the white caps there right now. Once you get out there, it's going to be a solid two to four foot seas and we've got storms rolling in. So consider all these factors when you are planning your trip. Look at your this Boca Inlet Cam is great because it tells you the current wind speed, your gusts, your wind direction, it's got barometer, temperature, everything going on. So use these tools. Don't just ignore them. All right. So back to Wendy and our waves let's look at our water waves are going to do for the rest of the week keep blasting through this and let everybody get on with their lives and plan their weeks here we go back to our waves. so here we are today right now west coast looking nice down in the protected areas you know if, if you're getting out there even though it's windy like i said it's going to start up that sand so you know just be plan accordingly again into wednesday we've got the wind ripping we are, you know, three to five. The further up north you go, the, the more nasty it gets. Down here in Biscayne Bay, eh, do some inshore fishing. Get it done. Go, go, go get you some uh, 
some mangrove snapper, um, the seat, the speckled trout hang out in there, all that goodness. Go, go for the uh, tarpon. Tarpon are swimming around in there too. All right, so this is Wednesday. The further we get off, it's like I said, in here it's still good. If you're, I wouldn't make a Bahamas trip, but it's pretty subdued out there. Thursday, we're looking again here five to six foot seas. And here comes that that's pretty rough stuff up there. When you see this pink, that means don't go. <laughs> so, and the further down south we go, the west coast, very laid down. Thursday, again, we're going to see this front pass through Thursday night. Let's look into Friday. Friday, it looks like we've got a confused sea. If you look here, we've got waves that are going in circles. Right up this trough right here, probably out in the stream. So Friday, yeah, it's, it's it's looking a little bumpy out there. But then it starts to calm down as we head into the afternoon of Friday. Again, over here, Marco Island, Naples, it's, it, it's ultra calm in there, but that's shallow water. So even if the wind's ripping, it's not going to be too bad. All right, let's move on to Saturday morning. Not so bad up north. It looks like two-foot seas down in as we go into Southern Palm Beach down in the Fort Lauderdale, we're looking at probably two to four. So like I said, it's gonna be sporty, but if you wanna plan your trip, and as we head into Saturday afternoon, we'll start laying down. A Saturday afternoon, and, and then as we saw with the wind, Sunday, yeah, not too bad. We're looking at two to three, solid two to three. We've got our waves coming from the Northeast. That could be a swell. But it might not be too bad. Again, over on the West Coast, same stuff in shallow as you head further out. It's not too bad on the, the West Coast. Get out and make you a trip. Go, go, go. Go for those. Uh, you got nine miles out. Grouper are in season all year long. Speaking of which, grouper season was it's upon us. May 1st. Everyone's waiting for it. Um, so, Sunday, Sunday afternoon starts picking up again. Not too bad though. I mean, you're looking at two to four, solid two to four. It's going to be choppy. So just be prepared. If you get seasick, make sure you handle that. Monday, there we go. Night, Monday is lighting up. Monday looks like two foot seats in the morning. And as we get in the afternoon, same thing. So Monday is actually looking like a good day to get over. Lake Okeechobee looks calm. Lake Okeechobee always looks calm. I mean, I, I've been out there before caught in storms, even though I'm a horrible uh, freshwater fisherman, but it's uh, Lake Okeechobee. Go, go get you some snakeheads. That's swordfish bait. <laughs> All right. What else? What, what do we got here? Can you tell when? Let's see. When can you tell the ocean is mirror-like or what to look for? Did, did you see this lighter color? You got to look down here at your chart. So let me answer that. When you're looking at your waves, this lighter color here, if you look at this color coded chart, the lighter it goes, that is like mirror like conditions. The darker the color gets, if you look at our color coded chart, the bumpier the seas are. So if we back out and you see in here the purples and pinks, that's further up. So these are these seas are upwards of 10 foot seas, if that helps. <clears throat> okay. So Monday is looking like, you know, uh, a doable day. Monday afternoon, same thing. It seems to be letting up. Tuesday, we start picking back up again. Back up, you know, three footers. Two to four, I would say. West Coast. The keys are just, the, the keys aren't really, eh, Monday keys in short, not too bad offshore. You're looking at being a little bumpy out there. Even though we did see a dead spot in Key Largo with the wind, it's gonna, you know, gonna be a little, little choppy out there. All right, so let's look at our rain real quick. Let's go, here we are today, tomorrow we'll, we'll zoom out go over a rain because we're going to see that uh there's our front right so wednesday here off florida not much going on but we've got that wind ripping so 
you know, the chance of, of a spotty shower or something with all the cloud cover going on, it, it's definitely possible. Thursday, here comes our front. Like I said, this is uh, midday. The front is over Gainesville and Tampa by the afternoon, 7 p.m. Here we are. It is uh, just crossing Orlando. And there we go. Midnight, it has pretty much start to head out to sea Friday, 8 a.m. There we are heading off into the Bahamas. There it's over Freeport and heading towards Nassau. And Friday, that's 4 p.m. It's it's long gone and our winds are gonna follow. Saturday, we're looking dry. We're gonna turn dry again. So these late fronts that we're getting like this, this is not a cold front at all. This will be a cool front. We're gonna be 90 degrees Thursday afternoon. And then come Friday, we're gonna have a top uh, temperature of about 80 degrees. So it'll be seasonably mild, nice weather. Again, the seas, eh, not so calm, but hey, you, you'll be able to get out there and do it. And again, this is just the forecast. So you know, the things can change again. Look at that webcam, use your resources, get a good visual on it. If it looks like it's doable, definitely get out there and do it. Sunday dry, Monday dry, nothing. Got rain clouds over Cuba, 100 miles away, south of uh, Key West. There we go, Monday into Tuesday dry. So we're looking at dry air for the weekend once we get on the other side of this front. So that's where we are headed with that in our rain. All right, and we're gonna look at our winds. Our winds right here are gonna say the same thing. Let's close this out. We'll look at our winds real quick. And they're, they're pretty much gonna say the same thing as what we were just looking at on Windy. Tuesday, right now we're in the high teens. Like I said, we're ripping gusts, oh, gusts up to 20. Tomorrow, same thing, winds from the Southeast, high teens, mid teens all day, gusts not really gusty, but consistent winds. Thursday, uh, winds start shifting to the south. Friday, our winds are all over the place because the front that has just passed, as soon as the front gets past us and further off, we will start having that northwest wind and it will shift to the northeast in the afternoon. But as you can see, Thursday, when that front's coming through, we got winds that are 20s with gusts, oh, mid 20s and higher. Then again, Friday, it starts petering off into the afternoon and into the night hours. Saturday, winds in the low double digits, gusts staying the same, wind direction north, shifting easterly into Sunday with, again, winds in the low double digits, 10 to 12 miles an hour, not very gusty at all. And Monday, like I said, Monday looks like that day. If you're gonna really try and plan, I don't know, skip work, do something if you're into that, or if you've got the capabilities where you uh, can just get out anytime. Monday looks like the day you'll wanna do it. Tuesday, Easterly starts picking up again. All right, so there is our wind. Let's look at what Noah says, our favorite folks who like to shut down fisheries. And as we explained this past weekend, NOAA is in charge of the federal waters and the commercial fishing regulations. So NOAA says small craft advisory in effect through Thursday, which of course floats with everything we've said. I'm not even going to go through it because we know the winds are ripping right now. They're saying 20 to 30 knots, seas four to six feet. Let's see what we got Thursday. Yeah, seas bad. Friday, let's see where they're going with Friday. Friday, they say it's gonna start laying down in the afternoon, seas three to four feet. And into Saturday, 10 to 15, seas three to five feet. So that feet, again, no, it tends to embellish stuff. I think when it comes to their, uh, their what they call the hazardous marine forecast. Sunday, 10 to 15, seas three to five. Uh, two to three along the coast, which is what we saw when we were looking at windy. So their Sunday forecast is looking pretty, uh, pretty doable. And again, into Monday, Monday is going to be the day where it lays down. Probably the best day to try and get offshore if you can. All right, let's move right on. That was uh, so that's our that's our weather Monday Sunday. Get out, do it. Let's go on ahead and check out what our moon is doing. 
and we'll get on with life. Here we are. We are at a 1% waxing crescent. Um, so anybody got to see the eclipse yesterday? Uh, I, I got to look at it momentarily with those little Amazon glasses. It was great. Um, enough of the eclipse talk for more than my fair share of it. 1% waxing. Again, waxing moon means we are moving away. We are moving to the dark side of the moon. Waning means we are moving towards a full moon. All right, so we're at 1%. So waxing again, I'm sorry. Waning means we are moving away from a full moon. Waxing means we are moving towards a full moon. Think of it like putting wax on your car and you're starting to shine it up. All right. So that's today, 1%. Tomorrow, we are at 4%. Yep, I always get this stupid advertisement. Hey, thanks, I enjoy having you watch. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. The closer the weekend gets, the darker it seems to get. Now, uh, if we're talking about the moon or the <laughs> the conditions, yeah, <laughs> yeah, never, I don't know. Anyway, um, okay, back to our moon. Getting off subject here. All right, we're, we're waxing, right? So the closer we get, uh, that's today, Wednesday, this is Thursday, we're at 10%, Friday, 18%. Ah, yes, I get you. <laughs> Windy app, yes. Um... But like I said, Monday's gonna be that day if you if you can get out. If not, if you're like me and you've got that full-time job, yeah, it ain't happening. Did it, did it, did it. Again, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 18%. Saturday, 27%. So we got a, a dark moon. Sunday, 37%. Monday, pretty much half moon. And Tuesday, we're getting a little bit past it. Okay, so our moon is looking good. It's not gonna illuminate the whole ocean at night, which means our pelagics should, you know, feed a little bit better. If you are a goggle eye fisherman, you can get out there. It's gonna be rough as hell to get out there and do it, but those guys are, uh, they're a different breed. They get out there and they do it because they got to when they get the chance. All right, and let's look at the last thing, which is our tides. Then we're going to let everybody go and make their decisions. But like I said, hopefully this show is make, helping you make it. Tide, right now, we are at, this is today. <coughs> we got the tide coming in. Remember, tides shift every six hours. Wednesday, we are in mid-tide rising. Tide starts to fall at approximately 10 a.m., 9.52. So this, this is going to be a funky one as we move through the day. Thursday, gonna be the day you don't wanna go out. Friday is probably iffy too, but we're still, we are starting to pull. We're getting our water coming in. So don't go and if you're gonna fish these days, especially if you fish off a jetty, don't go and fish in the morning. It's not gonna happen. You, If you're fishing in an inlet off a jetty, you gotta fish when the tide is going out. Otherwise you're fishing for rocks and, and sand and water. You're not going to catch anything. You have to fish the outgoing tide if you fish a jetty. All right. Saturday, our 6.41 a.m. The tide is, we're at a slack tide. So if you're getting out Saturday, that lets you know 12.30, it starts pulling the other way. And then, so this will follow suit for what's going to happen. Sunday, you will be at the slack tide probably at about 7.30 a.m. And Monday, probably at about 8.30 a.m. So you will be on the incoming, you'll be on the outgoing tide at around 6 a.m. Monday morning. So if you you got a little bit of fish in that inlet, fish in that water flow, and then move on with life after you get past it. All right, there we go, folks. That's everything we got for this week when it comes to it. And again, one more time before we go, I just want to tell you guys, First, I got to thank you for showing up and being a part of this and helping me make it happen. Everybody that contributes. If you are on Facebook, please go visit the South Florida Saltwater Fishing Report. Ask to join. 
It'll ask you two simple questions. One question is, what's your favorite fish to catch? The next question is, do you agree to my rules? The rules are simple, guys. Don't post your YouTube videos. Don't post uh, just selling stuff. This is really just a fishing report, letting people know what's going out there, what's biting. If you want to share what you're catching it on, where you caught it. Hey, even better that that it never hurts. That's what this community is all about and right here for. So, you know, um, I, I do my fair share of promotion for everybody when they're on their, uh, their YouTube channels, if they got them and I know about them too. Also, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a hater like that anyway. So that about does it for this one, folks till next Tuesday, South Florida saltwater fishing going wherever the cool wind takes us.